So in this video, I want to discuss the uh, formation of action potentials within neurons. And in this diagram that we have in front of you, uh, you will see the synapse. Now, we've seen synapses before in neuromuscular junction. And in this case, this synapse is between two neurons as you will propagate an action potential from the presynaptic to postsynaptic cell, where the presynaptic cell will uh, begin with an action potential that will communicate here. Just remember that in uh, the synapses that we do have chemical messengers that we will use called neurotransmitters. And neurotransmitters are found within vesicles in the presynaptic cells on the terminal ends. And previously we've seen neurotransmitters you learned in the neuromuscular junction about one called acetylcholine. Now there are many kinds of neurotransmitters. We talk about octopamine, dopamine, serotonin, a wide variety of things that can function as well as neurotransmitters such as uh, epinephrine, norepinephrine, neuroactive uh, glandular secretions. Now if we have a neurotransmitter, we need a binding site for them. We need a neuroreceptor. Now these neuroreceptors, as we already know, are in fact uh, the area in which we have what we call chemically gated ion channels. The sodium channels that will open, they open in response to binding of neurotransmitters to the neurotransmitter binding sites. Now, uh, what we want to remind ourselves is here we are in a resting state. To actually obtain resting state, you need a protein known as the sodium potassium ATPase pump. Sodium potassium pump will bring in two potassium cations and kick out three sodium cations, resulting in the internal membrane being negative in comparison to the positive outside of the cell. This makes this cell polarized. A polarized cell is a cell that is at rest, and at rest this cell has a charge of negative 70 millivolt. Negative 70 millivolt is the action, is the in an action potential, is the resting state where this cell is at rest, ready to go. Now remember the sodium potassium pump is uh, what is responsible for further setting this guy resetting the transvaporine potential, keeping a high concentration of potassium on the inside and a high concentration of sodium on the outside. And this is so that the whole thing can work once we're here at resting state. So as we go from resting state, we need to move it to the next state, the state of depolarization. To depolarize a cell, we again remind ourselves that we're drawing this back out. We have our secretory vesicles full of neurotransmitters. And these neurotransmitters are a wide variety. Many, many neurotransmitters. There are a lot of them. We, we, will, we, have to, we will discuss them in later portions. And I'm drawing this binding sites a little differently here. But one of the things that's important for us to remember is that in the presynaptic cell, an action potential, the result of a depolarization will, will move to the end to the terminal aspect of these neurons. So they go to the terminal neuron, one of the things that has to happen first is the, uh, because of this change in charge in the presynaptic cell, the voltage-gated calcium channels open. Calcium Ca2 plus will come in and this will result in exocytosis of neurotransmitters. They will move upwards and bind to the presynaptic membrane. When, the pre, when that happens, it will dump out the neurotransmitters across the cell and they will bind to the neuroreceptor sites. Now remember, at this point, sodium potassium pump has shut off. And once you get binding of these guys, the first thing is going to, because they have bound to, your sodium gates open. Sodium is in high concentration outside the cell, so it will come in. So as sodium plus rushes in, for two reasons. Number one, the inside of this cell was previously negative, 
and the outside is positive, and sodium is positive, it rushes in because, number one, there is a concentration gradient difference, simple diffusion, chemical gradients. Secondly, there's an electrochemical gradient where internal is negative. It comes in attracted to the internal cell, which causes that sudden rush where the cell now will be becoming positive. This positive cell goes from negative 70 to negative 60 millivolt, negative 60 millivolt. This is threshold. Now, it goes to negative 60, a little bit more positive, and it will go all the way to plus 30 during the action potential. And the result of going anywhere from threshold to 30, all of these together is your action potential phase. During deep polarization, we, so once we go over threshold, and that's what your graded potential is all about. We're getting ourselves over, and then action potential begins, and we reach threshold, and then we go. This is why we call action potentials all or none events. Either they will happen or they don't. Either we do have an action potential or we don't. And once we're at plus 30, uh, this charge will continue on and we will see in the next stage, once we repolarize this cell, how we need to do that. Repolarization of the cell. Now note where we are here at this point that we have our, during this point, our neurotransmitters are bound to, and they do have neurotransmitter still bound. Now, the sodium channels are open. The way we get rid of that is we take some sort of enzyme and we, we remove the neurotransmitters. We'll take those back and recycle them, uh, reuptake them or destroy them. And once that happens, the sodium gates close. Sodium gates will close because the neurotransmitter, they are chemically gated ion channels, they close. Then what has to happen is we will get the opening of other channels. We get our potassium channels open. Potassium channels open. In this case, potassium rushes out, K plus, cations. Potassium cations rush out of the cell. This cell was internally positive and starts becoming slightly negative. It will go back to being negative again in respect of the positive outer cell. Now, as that continues on, we go from a charge of plus 30, we start dropping down. We go to negative 70 at resting and we drop down just a little bit more to minus 90 and we are hyperpolarized. We drop down fairly low and uh, this charge uh, as we rebound. Now really to get this guy back up to where we need to go, we kick on sodium potassium pump, bring in, we bring in our two potassium, kick out our three sodiums and that will get us back further to our resting state, which is our refractory period. We've got to get back to that state of where we needed to go. So as we look at the neurophysiology, remember as I mentioned on the first day of class, that all of this is about what happened, how do things get across cells, and what happened, what do they do when they get there. And these guys, as we're mentioning, this all results in changes of charges due to the imbalance of ions that are coming in and out of the cell. As they pass around, they will change this charge, sending an action potential, propagating it downwards. And just like the postsynaptic cell, once the action potential forms, it propagates, it will go to the end of that, and then it will result in it releasing neurotransmitters, propagating action potential from neuron to neuron to neuron, all the way down to the terminal neuron, which will, uh, which will could be a neuromuscular junction, uh, whatever synapses at the end, neuroglandular junction, to initiate that nerve at the end of the stream to innervate something to cause a change in our bodies. And this is how we generate action potentials, and then as we've learned in chapter nine, how we actually cause the action potential itself to secrete uh, some sort of neurotransmitter into another cell to affect them. 
And this concludes my video on discussing the uh, uh, neurophysiology on formation of action potentials. Thank you.